Hey guys, out once again in yet another abandoned village. This one being out in the area of Fukushima. And this one having a bit of a guest. So I've been working on my house recently. As you can see, my house, you know, it's not to everyone's liking. I've been working on it for 12 months and um, yeah. Come on in, come have a look. Cribs. MTV's Cribs. So sometimes I like to just sit here in the dark, in the filth, and um, just think about life, really. Think about how, how much better a broad Japan is than, than Tokyo and Explore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it's great. good that you have pets, though. <laughs> and, you know, I know how much you love cats. That one there. What's his name? Does he have a name? Uh, Frederick. Frederick. Frederick the cat, isn't it? Kind of looks like a Marcus, but we'll go with Frederick. That's fine. And because these are shot on action cameras, you're not going to get a whole ton of detail inside. And we're most certainly not going to be actually going. I mean, I'm showing Inside? my life, it's doing nothing. <laughs> it's nothing doing at all. Ab look, look at the way it's buckling here. Like, there's not. Yeah, I'm really glad we're standing right beneath the roof that's yeah. going to come down. It's raining pretty hard. Like, the water could bring the whole thing down at any, <laughs> any moment. So, this particular village, again, is out in the area of Fukushima. And Chris was really excited because. Before this village shut down, the emperor came out to visit this place. Yeah, so, I, I mean, as you probably know, there's so many haiku, so many abandoned buildings in Japan. And they're sort of left to their own devices. People leave or pass away and then they're left behind. And I think this town has been here since the 1970s. It's been abandoned. In the 1920s, there were about 200 people living here, right? Yeah. So. If we were to do like a, a little synopsis, a little like, I guess, rundown of this place, it was, I think the peak of it was 1935 with 43 families and 266 residents. Uh, the depopulation started right after uh, World War II around 1955, entirely abandoned in 1979. Uh, it's called Otaki or Odaki. Right. And, and, and you know, if this were a normal town, we wouldn't be able to get to it. This little road would be overgrown. It would be completely inaccessible. But there's a reason the locals here keep this road clean. There's a reason it's still accessible and open. And that is because at some point in the 1920s or 30s, I think, the emperor, right, came here. Uh, it must have been sometime in the 1920s, I think, because it's the, uh, it was the emperor before Hirohito. So... The emperor came here, you know, had some fish and chips and some tea, the cuisine of Fukushima. And uh, and so they, they've kept that. They've got a little monument here for the emperor. Mm. And I think there's a there's a sense of pride here in the town, or what's left of it, for the people knowing that the emperor came here to this quiet little valley, this quiet little slice of Fukushima. Mm. There's, a, there's a sense of pride there. And that's why they maintain the road and it's still accessible, even though the building looks like it could collapse in the next four, maybe five minutes. We, coming in, you, you can see, I, I love the overgrown ivy and whatnot. This is not safe to walk through. Here we go. You've got the old cart here, old ladders. But as Chris and I were driving into this area, a car came down from this side of the road. And we looked on the map. It seemed like there was a connecting road. And we drove up there around the corner. Yeah, we drove around the corner. I was like, oh, it must, the, road, the road must come out somewhere. And we went around the corner, and the road is stopped by a massive log and lots of debris. And so either it was a ghost car, or they went up there and turned around. <laughs> I'm going with ghost car. Feels like the more plausible of the two, really. It was a 1920s, 1920s Ford. That no, wasn't was it? Was it? <laughs> it was, very it was like car. a it was like a 2015 yeah, Prius. Yeah. Like. <laughs> but this looks really cool. It's like um, they've used some sort of. It's not concrete, is it? It's like no something that goes beyond wood. Hmm. 
Like if you look, you can actually see the, the base structure of the building here. And the corner structure is all made out of old bamboo. The rope tied through to all the bamboo lining going through like that right there, that's bamboo. And then all in here, you've got the, I, I guess, hay and mud, which was used to build the walls of this place. It's just bamboo, yeah, yeah. hay and mud. Oh. Hay and hay mud. And mud. The cornerstone of the Tokyo Lens Explore channel. There it is. <laughs> Hay and mud. So I think down the road just a little bit, there were more buildings and there was a very surprisingly new looking shrine that I kind of wanted to take a peek at. Also, Kuri. How do you say? I can't remember. Chestnuts. chestnuts. It's a very, very fresh chestnuts. Probably a lot of bears around. They love them. <laughs> I'm actually surprised at this tank above all else this tank here is in amazing condition maybe because it's like protected below the straw roofs but there's next to no rusting whoever made this tank whatever company produces this tank i want to buy stock in their company because <laughs> they, they make good stuff so let us hop back in the car for a second and go check out. You can see the original yeah, straw you can see roofing. The straw roof. That's incredible. Wow. So we're gonna go check out an area that's just a little bit down the road. So this section here, can we really call it a section? This building, if you will, is wow. the next section. <laughs> it's Look at that. Much more overgrown. Crazy thing, that was a house once. No, it's like an empty shell covered in rubbish. There's a giant hole in the roof that makes it look like it's lit up from inside, but it's not. There are shoes and so much more. And I don't like being under the roof, but let's take a peek. You can see clear through. This would have actually been a really nice place to sit and enjoy the river at one point. This, wow, would have been a really beautiful space. Chris, come check this out. Oh yeah. Aside from the, like this room here, just sitting and overlooking the river. I feel kind of inspired. Maybe having some song. <laughs> <laughs> if the atmosphere is ever ruined, it is now. You, you just, you, you come somewhere like this, you get inspiration. I come here, when I write my music, my award-winning, <laughs> Grammy award-winning music, I come to places like this, and then this just happens, you know. Let's go this way. <laughs> yeah, watch out. <laughs> oh. Okay. And we're 100% not going up them, but there is a set of stairs here that leads to the area with no roof. And coming back out. Can I get out this way? I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> the uh, spider web. One thing you gotta be mindful of, there were some signs saying, I think, uh, be wary of radiation. Cause although we're, I think 150, kilometers from the Daiichi facility, maybe less than that, when there was the explosion that went into the clouds and whatnot, a lot of the wind carried it into this direction, into the mountains. Mm. Um, obviously, it's probably been washed away a lot of it now, but some of the soil probably has higher radiation levels than you'd get in their sort of normal background radiation levels. So mm. just don't eat the, eat the plants, nor <laughs> don't eat the leaves. I won't be eating any leaves. I know you like to do that. Yeah, it's a hobby. Good to have hobbies. You can actually see the river down here and a lot of the, the signs that Chris was talking about was saying, do not fish from this river specifically for those reasons. But you'll also notice there's a ton of garbage or as Chris would say, rubbish down there. And another sign that you'll see in an area like this is saying, please don't come to these areas to dump your rubbish, your garbage, because 
Like with many countries, Japan has an issue with people going out to the countryside to dump. And One simple push. Um, that's the end of the Tokyo <laughs> Lens dynasty. Let's check out what is in here. Oh, that door was pretty stuck. It is just... Oh my lord. It is just a single tatami room. Again, overlooking the river. This must have been a really beautiful spot before all of this was mm. abandoned and just disposed of and ruined. Wait, 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 wait. What's up? You hear that? <laughs> Get out of here. Grammy Award winning track. Come on, Japan. <laughs> This is so ruins <laughs> the atmosphere. All right, so here we have the Mountain God Shrine. And it looks like the Tori Gate up here is actually freshly painted. I'll, should I say the line I always say when I come somewhere like this? It's like Hayao Miyazaki, isn't it? Not like spiritual <laughs> way. Actually, it's a really, uh, really nice shrine. Yeah. Uh, but kind of, yeah, very brand new. It actually says here, I think, it was built last Tuesday. It was built last Tuesday. Uh, oh, man. I think 20... 2015? Yeah. No, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, no. Heisei... Huh. Heisei 25年. What year is that? That's actually not that new. That was like four years ago, maybe? It's just... Oh God, there's a big spider there. Is there? Oh wow. Don't walk through the shrine. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know if you guys... It's not that big, but like... Yeah, <laughs> it's right just there. like the net takes <laughs> over yeah. the dead it's, center. It's really well concealed there. Uh, yeah. You caught that. <laughs> I would not have seen that. I would have walked clear through it and then that spider would have been crawling on me. As always. I think a lot of spiders end up taking rides with me on these trips. They end up in the car. We go for a drive. The rain has started. This is... We we're kind of rolling the dice with the weather today. And it's not as bad as it could be. So, this is the whole shrine right here. It is really, really new. Like, you can look how clean this concrete is. Oh. That was a spider web as well. And this is the Otaki Mountain God Shrine. Huh. So, if you want a screenshot right there, and read that in your leisure. There it is in beautiful 4K. It's a good little bit of JLPTM1 practice there for reading. <laughs> no. Let's go further into the uh, into the valley, up, up into the town. Sounds good. Just gonna head back down and then drive down just a little more into the town as Chris <laughs> brushes. <laughs> <laughs> spider webs and leaves and random things that are for some reason stuck to him off we will walk down this way so this section here wow that is how you doing bud this section here appears to have previously been a soba shop They've got signs up saying that unrelated persons, please stay out. You quite literally couldn't pay me to go inside of there. Try to look up this. It says Omide Hana Tsukuri. Hmm. Omide means memory, Hana flower, Tsukuri making. Yeah. Memory flower. Memory flower. Am I getting that right? Yeah. Omide Hana Tsukuri. Huh? Eh? That is Tsukuri, isn't it? Hana yeah. Die something something. 
Oh, uh, this spider. is. Uh, oh my god, is that a spider? Yeah, that's a uh, daddy long legs. Oh, this is the town name here. Uh, the Otaki or Odaki? Right. Wow. There we go. And this is what it looked like inside the shop. You can see the kitchen down there. The kekseki seats and whatnot here. And then as wow. we drive through this area, it's got a ton of little bridges. And every one is sketchier than the one before. <laughs> and Chris has been convinced that we're going to die we driving over these bridges. I was a bit... Yeah, it was a bit scary. <laughs> yeah. This isn't even the worst one. One of the worst ones is actually up in that direction. And we just can't walk through there. This is mm. a really cool angle. You've got like the mm. river. What's incredible is this building is, is just held up by like two pieces of wood. Yeah. Over the edge of like a ravine. And it stood there, you know, 20, 30 years. It's still intact. Incredible, really. I think it's just sad to think this used to be a, a road that people would come down. Mm. Look at the metal. They just... So this area, they built the major road that kind of cut outside of this. Yeah. And it was, I guess, one of the contributing factors. They just well, didn't yeah, need it, this space it, anymore. It would have directed all the traffic around here, right? So mm. this is quite a common theme in the countryside. You know, they get these brand new roads, these highways, and that takes all the traffic away from little communities like this. Thus, nobody comes to the sober restaurant, or whatever it is, uh, and the, they go out of business. And that's something that's quite common in the countryside around here, I find, in Tohoku in particular. Um, yeah, it's kind of sad, but it's just the way it is, right? Mm -hmm. Progress. Yeah. Capitalism. We all love it, don't we? Capitalism. <laughs> Shall we hike up and show the beautiful waterfall? Uh, um. <laughs> so, as we drove along here, the entire area is basically just a forested area, just like this, running along the side of a river. In fact, if you are looking for abandoned villages on Google Maps and whatnot, especially when traveling through Japan, since not all of them will be marked, what you're going to want to do is find yourself a narrow path that leads off towards a river and then more often than not that road will end on Google Maps but if you zoom in and look through you'll actually see markings for buildings more often than not and it's because a lot of these old villages as with pretty much anywhere else in the world are built along rivers and waterways and so as we were there's another is that the same car Oh, I don't we, know. Ghost car. We keep having like mystery ghost cars <laughs> just come through and turn around and then disappear. We've probably had at least three to four ghost cars just kind of <laughs> disappear along the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And as we were driving in here, Chris is like, oh, there's a beautiful waterfall off there to the side. And then we got a bit of a, a closer peek at the beater, wa beater waterfall. The beer waterfall. The beer waterfall. The best kind of waterfall there is. <laughs> and you can tell that some of the buildings that used to be here have already been disassembled, taken down, removed. But because building removal can be quite an expensive process, it's one of the things that leads to a lot of these places inevitably being abandoned and left as they are. I don't know how close I'm going to be able to get to the waterfall, give the lens a wipe. There we go. Right. Not gonna be able to see it from this angle. I gotta go in. Good luck. <laughs> I knew, I knew Chris was not gonna be coming with me. Oh wow, that is a huge spider web. Okay, cool. Bye bye. It's been a good time. So on surface, looks like a really nice waterfall. Until, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, you look up and you notice it's just coming out of a big black industrial pipe. Seems like this was rerouted from somewhere else. A slightly man-made waterfall. All right, Chris, I've survived. 
kind of. Were there any more houses along the village? I don't remember. Neither do I. Well, let's head back, jump in the car, drive down the road a little more and see if there's anything left to this little abandoned village. I warned you, this is what happened if I came on the Tokyo Lens Explore. <laughs> Sick beats. I'll never use the word sick again. I hate the way <laughs> the word sick has come to me good. It's like, I've, got, I've got quite a visual imagination. When somebody says, that's sick, I literally picture someone going, over the floor. <laughs> that's what happens when you're 31. So that's... Out uh... of time, out, I don't connect with the youth, the youth of today. <laughs> if you're a viewer who's 18 or under, I don't know who you are, what you do, or why you are. <laughs> or why you are. What you're thinking, I don't know what's cool. Um, what, what is cool if you're 18? Sick beats. Sick beats. <laughs> oh wow, is that like an abandoned bus oh up there? Fuck. What is that? What is that? How, How do we get it? up there? Okay, <laughs> there's got to be a way up there. Oh, this looks like... Chris has just left me behind. Everyone leaves me behind when I go. Oh wow. <sighs> That's pretty cool. I don't even know what kind of bus that is. That's, that's almost hippie bus level. And it has just been taken back. Oh, wow. Stop here for a second. Grab one or two photos. It's because this is the kind of place you need to have photos of. Whew. And now we'll see if we can make our way back down. Hopefully without falling and dying or having anything fall on us. <laughs> All right, so off in the distance, I can already see Chris scurrying to the car and looking back. I'm gonna get back there before, <laughs> before he leaves without me. That bus was actually pretty cool. All right, let's head down the road a bit. We got we got a set of golf clubs. We got a telephone. Kenwood, good brand. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look. Kenwood telephone. Some better stuff here than my apartment. Some kind of pump. People really do just do come out here to drop their trash. And now, so that is the new road that got built through, that kind of circumvented this road, just got rid of the need to use it. And now for the hyper exciting reveal of the final building of this village. When you look up the word excitement in the dictionary, you'll just see this video and that house. That's it right there. This one looks like it was probably, again, a, uh, a shop of some sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This town here is, was originally an old, like, shikuba, or post town here in Japan. And a little bit different from the post towns like Magomejuku and Sumagojuku and all of those. What's this the is, purpose of the post town? It's just to be a stopping off point on a mountain journey. They, there's... <sighs> So if you take a look at, for example, the, the English word post town, it was based off of towns that had major post offices. Mm. Whereas in Japan, more often than not, they were stop off places for samurai along the way. I've actually never, 
dive deep dive deep dive into the history of post towns themselves and considering how many i've been to over the past year or two yeah i'm now just wanting to do a personal deep dive into i want to see you, i want to see you do a deep dive there's always really useful information about each post town and post towns in general and whatnot that comes up in the comment section and it's given me a lot of starting points so and then everything back here it's just overgrown. <laughs> what? My shoes. Your shoes are just ruined. These shoes were brand new three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, that is the abandoned village here in Fukushima. What did you think, Chris? Is um, it everything you ever dreamed it would be? And more. And more. Um, that was right. I, I kind of like these places in the rain because there's a lot of mosquitoes. And when yeah. it's rain, they te mosquitoes tend to disappear. So, yeah, it's a cool little place. It's always kind of moving to come to these little run-down villages and towns, right? Mm. Think what might have been, think of the 200 people that lived here, playing, having fun, and then just seeing it look like that. It's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. Yes. It teaches you about the passage of time. It does. It I used does. to think about what's important in life. By Back subscribing to Abroad in Japan. And the know, most those, important, the right important things. So I'll link a little bit of a playlist at the end of this video that Disgraceful. shows the... Plugging your own videos. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. In a Tokyo Lens Explore video. <laughs> if uh, you want to see more about abandoned villages in Japan, maybe a fun joke video between Chris and I and then a deep dive into the area, I will link those for you. Uh, if you haven't already, which you probably have, Make sure you go subscribe to Abroad in a Jam. Man, I, I, <laughs> abroad in a Jam. <laughs> abroad in a Jam. It's my new channel, especially uh, devoted to jam, both international, <laughs> local jam, strawberry jam, raspberry jam, all the jams. Abroad in a Jam. Check it out, guys. But thanks for having me, Norm. No worries. I say thanks for having me. I drove you here in my car. And we'll see you again. That's the sort of thing you get on Abroad in a Jam. <laughs> Real soon. Thank you.